Of course, we have to protect the Earth, and we have to protect our machines on the Earth. We have to protect our space cover on the Earth. But eventually, we will also have to protect us, our astronauts when they go beyond the uh, low Earth orbit. And we are doing this very, very shortly. So uh, knowing space weather, being able to detect at source these massive uh, effects of you know, mass being ejected from the sun, it could have up to you know, 20 hours, 24 hours, so that there is a warning time for the more massive uh, events. My name is Cesar Garcia. I work at the European Space Agency in the Netherlands and I'm the Solar Orbiter Project Manager. The big questions our scientists want to address with Solar Orbiter relate to how the Sun creates and controls the heliosphere. So the heliosphere is the bubble of charged particles in which everybody and everything is in our solar system. Now the second big question that uh, Solar Orbiter will address is what is making the magnetic fields and the variability of the sun? What is the root cause? What is really helping it to up? The uh, scientists think that the, uh, uh, the main elements of the magnetic field are flipping north to south every 11 years. However, nobody has been able to look at those magnetic fields from the poles of the sun. So solar orbiter over the years will be changing the orbital plane and we will be orbiting and being able to see what happens in the North Pole and the South Pole of the Sun. So Solar Orbiter is a mission of cooperation between the European Space Agency, or as we call it ESA, and NASA. And what this means uh, is that we, uh, both agencies cooperate, each one of them with their own mandate for this mission. In this case, ESA took the lead in the mission and we were responsible for building the spacecraft integrating uh, instruments that came from all member states, from ESA and from NASA, and eventually made it available for NASA to launch us into space. After launch, we at ESA are operating the, the mission in space. Solar Orbiter has two types of instruments, and it is the interplay of those two types that really makes the mission new. In mid-June, what happened is that we switched on for the first time the remote sensing instruments and we took the first images. Because of the resolution of the cameras looking into the details of the sun surface, then the scientists could already find out some features that they had not seen before. And those are these campfires. Now, what, what will happen is that as the mission, you know, we, we learn how to calibrate those uh, telescopes better and we take more images, they will be able to look into uh, even more detailed features. My name is Alan Zide. I'm a program executive in the Science Mission Directorate in Heliophysics for NASA. The campfires are like small solar flares or small coronal mass ejection. And why is this important? This is space weather. Space weather and how it affects Earth is just so critical. There have been a few events in history, like the Carrington event back in 1859, where a huge coronal mass ejection, probably the largest geomagnetic magnetic storm that's been um, recorded, hit the Earth. And back then, you know, we only had telegraphs. But during that time, there was so much energy hitting the Earth. These telegraphs, they were turned off on both ends yet the energy was still going through and they could still send messages. The wires were even catching on fire. By doing the studying that we're doing is we're trying to prepare to understand and model when these events are going to occur to give us enough time and warning so that we can protect uh, all of our spacecraft that are in orbit and what's happening on the Earth. I mean, could you imagine if you just knocked out all the transformers on an entire half of a country it would take years to recover from something like that. Watching Solar Orbiter come together, the, the team just worked so well together, led by Cesar. You know, it, was, it was struggling a little bit, and Cesar stepped in and really took the reins and got everybody focused, and we just charged into the, the final stretch, and it was the most perfect launch. It, the countdown was flawless, not a single issue on the launch vehicle or the spacecraft. And it was the clearest night I have ever seen for a launch. You could see that 
Yeah, launch vehicle and spacecraft go forever. It was beautiful. It just brought a tear in my eye. It was fantastic. I, I have to say, well, I've, I've seen a few launches, but that was the most beautiful launch I've ever seen. 